Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I am Bilal Abdul Kareem, and the fighters are now preparing to leave the city of Aleppo. Now, if you can get a little bit closer here, and you will see what this is. Bilal Abdul Kareem knows you may not like him. He knows you think he's a terrorist. He knows you might even think he deserves to die. They attacked a prayer place. But the plaintiff in maybe the most important federal court case in the war on terror era doesn't care. He thinks that at the very least, you should be interested in his story. Drone, drone. There's a drone in there. Looks like there's a drone in the air. Because here's what's at stake. If he loses, it will essentially mean the courts cannot stop the president from killing anyone, even Americans, even you. Helicopter right above our heads. Born Daryl Lamont Phelps, this American citizen says he has now survived five drone attacks that he believes were ordered by the U.S. government. I have lots of criticism for the ulama, the scholars of the religion, for one reason. They're supposed to be here, but they're not. If me, a journalist uh, from New York, could find his way here, I'm sure that some of the scholars from Egypt, I'm sure that some of the scholars from Saudi Arabia, I'm sure that some of the scholars that we all see on TV um, have the ability to make their way over here too. So, um, but. Uh, maybe some came and hung out for a couple of days of, uh, of maybe, uh, you know, I'm not saying it was a photo op for them, but they didn't have the intention to spend the time that's needed. And Rasulullah um, used to praise Sham and the people of Sham. So the importance of what's going on here is known. So, yeah, um, I'm disappointed in them, to be honest. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to the Realist Podcast in the Dunya, the Three Muslims. Today we're joined with a very special guest, Brother Bilal Abdul Karim from Northern Syria. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thanks for having me. No worries. Thank you for making the time to be here. So, given that you're currently in Northern Syria, tell us a little bit about what's going on. Well, as, uh, as your uh, audience might know, there's a 10-year civil war that's been going on here, and um, it's continuing uh, even up until now. Um, there are huge uh, humanitarian crises going on. Um, there are still rockets and bombs which are falling um, on civilian homes. Um, but because Syria, like other crises um, going on around the world, it, it doesn't stay in the news that long. Uh, maybe when there is a huge massacre, it'll be in the news for about three or four days and then it disappears and people kind of get the idea, hey, well, you know, what's going on in Syria? I, I guess it, they must have solved it because we don't hear that much. Mm -hmm. But it hasn't been solved and uh, it, it's an ongoing uh, crisis uh, uh, over here. Um, it's, 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 wow, it's, it's been 10 years. So um, I'm just wondering, you know, where do I start? You know, maybe you help me out a little bit. SubhanAllah. Um, let's, inshallah, start with the beginning, the, the history of the civil war, how it began, and um, all the events, the major events that led up to today in this current state. Okay, you know, uh, people have all these different um, conspiracy theories that they want to come up with. The West was behind it. And, you know, watch out because shaitan is in the milk and, all of this other stuff. Look, let's just talk business for a second, okay? Bashar al-Assad and his father um, were oppressing the Syrian people for decades. And they just reached a point where they said, you know what, we had enough of it. And then they started out by doing peaceful protests. They were protesting the, um, the torture of a 10-year-old boy. Okay, that doesn't sound like something that's uh, that you need a you know, a conspiracy theory for, but here in Syria, you do. 
So people took to the streets and they protested. So then Charles S. Being the typical Arab leader, he just said, hey, you know what? Those people, they got their nerve to be out there protesting me. So he decided to sick his, um, uh, his security forces on the people um, to disperse the crowds. Well, they did disperse the crowds. But then that's when an armed rebellion uh, started. So it started out as, a, as peaceful protests, and they were demanding rights. But that wasn't something that most Arab dictators can stomach. So they decided, um, so he decided that he was going to put down the rebellion, um, you know, in a show of force. Well, it didn't really work out that way. Um, it, it, it morphed into a call for democracy and freedom and such like that. Um, a year and a half into the Civil War, uh, the bulk of the fighting or the heavy lifting was being taken up by um, Islamic groups. And so it morphed from a call from, for democracy into a call for Sharia. And then it, um, you know, and then it, it, it continued for some time. Um, and uh, it's still ongoing even up until now. There are a lot of nuances that have taken place um, a lot of uh, different actors have come to the table to um, say that they want Sharia, but, you know, kind of break out in hives when you tell them, look, you're going to have to judge by Sharia. And it's like, really? We didn't know that part, you know? So, yeah, it's a lot of stuff that, that's, that's still going on now. Uh, so, a lot, you know, one of the things that I think people should realize is that um, there's a misconception that just because Islamic fighters might will say, quote unquote, beat up the bad guys. It doesn't necessarily mean that all of a sudden, all right, Sharia is going to kick in. Do you see? Um, even that takes time. Um, it takes laying down the, the foundations. There's a process to it. So, and, and this is part of the process that we're ongoing now. SubhanAllah. So how did these and why did these groups arise and was their goal really just to establish sharia or is it because a lot of the time with Arabic countries when they go into like political and, and economic turmoil isis and these other groups they rise up and it's all kind of a a fight for power and right and we wouldn't say isis is exactly instilling sharia in the proper way and we wouldn't say the means or the ends are justified so would you say that these groups in syria are similar in the sense that they're maybe hiding behind the banner of Islam, or do they genuinely want to instill Sharia? Well, you have some that do some of this and some that do some of that, as you, as you just mentioned. Um, one of the issues, this is a prime issue, is that there is a lack of knowledge. Now, um, if you don't even know to ask and you just do, that's like a worst case scenario. Another case scenario is also when you know and you just don't care. The better case scenario is that you don't know, so you know to ask. And of course, then um, you know, the, the uh, participation of the people of knowledge, um, uh, you know, that's the best case scenario. But what we have here is we have some that are serious about um, implementation of Sharia, and there are some that are serious about um, holding on to power. Uh, that's just the reality of the situation. Um, it's always going to be uh, somebody that doesn't want to listen. <laughs> that, that's just real, you know, and we've got our share of those that just don't want to listen. Um, but there's also something else is that um, I have lots of criticism for the ulama, the scholars of the religion, for one reason. They're supposed to be here, but they're not. Um, now, if me, a journalist uh, from New York could find his way here, I'm sure that some of the scholars from Egypt, I'm sure that some of the scholars from Saudi Arabia, I'm sure that some of the scholars that we all see on TV um, have the ability to make their way over here too. So, um, but uh, maybe some came and hung out for a couple of days of, uh, of maybe, uh, you know, I'm not saying it was a photo op for them, but they didn't have the intention to spend the time that's needed. And Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam um, used to praise Sham and the people of Sham. 
So the importance of what's going on here is known. So yeah, um, I'm disappointed in them, to be honest. Yeah, subhanAllah, um, the, the, the leaders, the people, and we're actually learning about this in class, um, the different groups and the different organizations and, and the, the different leaders of the world, they have this very apolitical stance when it comes to Islam. And they have all this, like the spiritual aspect, they don't have the actual worldly implementation aspects. So subhanAllah, the, you know, they'll day and night call for people um, to do the fara'id and, and have the spiritual sense, which is beautiful. But when it comes to the, the political aspects, the economic aspects, getting out and actually working and fighting for the sake of Allah, you know, jihad, like, like, like actual firm, hard struggle for the sake of Allah, you don't really see a lot of um, the, the world leaders, the Muslim leaders doing much for the sake of Allah rather than for the sake of themselves or their own um, motives. So I am um, very similar in, that, in sharing that disappointment. Uh, so may Allah grant us righteous leaders. I mean, I mean, I mean, but we also have to keep a thing uh, uh, in mind that, you know, verily Allah does not change a condition of a people until they change themselves. And that has to be borne in mind. Um, you know, I also have this thing, you know, you mentioned about uh, about politics and uh, religion. Um, I don't know the difference between the two. I, I, and I don't know that Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam made any distinction between politics and religion. Yeah. What we're supposed to be doing is still what we're supposed to be doing. If you want to put a, a, a political cloak on it or a suit and tie, mm -hmm. um, we're not supposed to be with our left hand. <laughs> Whether you got a suit and tie on or not, are you sitting in Washington or are you sitting in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia? There's yeah. certain things that we're supposed to be doing that we're not doing. Yeah. And um, we're not supporting um, our brothers and sisters because that's their issue. That's their thing. They'll work it out. Um, that's not politics. That's a lack of adhering to the religion. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as long as we're going to carry on like that, yeah. what they're going to do, or I should say the enemies of Allah, the enemies of Islam, what they're going to just do is they're going to say, you know what, if we want to pick apart um, uh, 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 Syria, we'll go over to Turkey and say, hey, Turkey, come on. Yeah, there's no need to get involved in this. Look, these guys over here, man, they got nothing. And then they'll go to Iraq and they'll say to the Muslims in Iraq, guys, 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 take it easy. It's just a couple of bandits that we're going to have to mop out. It's no problem. And this is an ongoing process. And our leaders continue to be easily pacified um, a, a couple of bucks, um, you know, a bit of legitimacy, uh, maybe a trip to Washington or Downing Street, huh? 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 You see? And then next thing you know, voila, you've got a leader that absolutely turns a blind eye to everything that's going on right on his border. And that's just the reality of it. SubhanAllah. So what would you say are the next steps for people who want to help who can help whether it be laymen regular you know people like myself and like Fayad and other people um or whether it be people of power politicians um and likewise okay well if we're talking about the, the uh the, the the lay person and this is where the focus has to be on mm -hmm. because look let's just we, we, you know Let's just talk business for a second, okay? Um, many of the leaders, once they've gotten into the position of leadership, the prime directive becomes keeping that leadership position. That's all that becomes important um, for a lot of them. And therefore, helping the Muslims and such like that is not in their uh, protocol. Uh, it's, it's just not a, a, it's, it's not a priority. It's not, it's not an issue. Oh, they may sell themselves the idea that as long as they can uh, kind of, you know, they can solidify themselves. And once they've solidified themselves, then we're going to help the Muslims. Yeah, but then it's an election, you know, and then it's like, OK, well, let's put this off again. Let's just get this other election uh, um, uh, under our belts. And then it's going to be time, you know, and it just doesn't work like that. Um, you know, people who are serious about helping the Muslims are people who, um, I'm talking about from a leadership standpoint, you know, most of these people are in their 40s, 50s, and 60s. 
So they've got a track record in terms of what they um, have been about. And we have to ask ourselves before we start uh, voting for these people, okay, uh, this person, this individual, they're Muslim, alhamdulillah, jazamallahu khaira, um, but does this person have a history of supporting Islamic causes in an Islamic way? Mm. Now, this is key because you can't just sit there and, just, and then just say, okay, you know what? As soon as I get me some power, man, this Islam thing inside of me is just going to kick in and watch. You're going to see what's going on. No, no, man. It just doesn't go like that. Um, but uh, they would like for us to believe that. And for some cockamamie reason, people think that we're supposed to be overjoyed because a person named Muhammad or Salah or Ahmed got elected. But this guy has no Islamic agenda. Why should I be happy? What does that have to do with me? But sometimes, sometimes, those can be the worst ones because once they get elected, they have to prove to their constituents that no, 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 I'm, 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 I'm all right. I'm, I'm not like them, you see? And sometimes you get it worse. So I'm saying that for the lay person, first of all, if there are Muslim candidates, look, just ask them and don't accept answers like, no, brother, we can't ask questions like that in front of uh, 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 non-Muslims because, you know, they, they, they won't understand. No, because those will be the first ones that when they get elected and then you call them up and say, hey, Mohammed, yeah, man, remember you said you was going to do that thing? And he's just like, I think you have the wrong number, brother. And we've seen it countless times, countless times. So the lay person, um, you know, uh, 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 be careful of these candidates that, 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 that you support. Another thing, causes like Syria, Palestine, Afghanistan, and other places share uh, news about them. Uh, keep these uh, conflict zones in the forefront of people's minds. Don't allow these things to fade away in the back. That won't work for us. That won't help. That will actually work against uh, us because once Syria goes off the radar, that's when the fangs and claws and the chemical weapons come out, you see. But when Syria is on the, the front burner and all eyes are on it, then it just becomes normal warfare. So we have to understand the way um, the, the world works, the way, um, you know, so yeah, those are a couple of things that, that the lay person can do. You're on the internet and you see information about Syria, share it, talk about it, keep the people talking about it. Ask the people at the masjid if you can have a, 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 um, a, a forum or, or a dinner or something like that. Now, some people are going to just roll their eyes and say, oh, he's at it again. But that's OK, because there'll be other people who will say, OK, bet, I'll come. Let, you know, I, I may not have anything to contribute. I might have something to contribute. I might have my ideas to contribute or I might put a container to, uh, uh, together for people. But, you know, when people are talking about it, that's like knocking on doors. And if you knock on 10 doors, one will answer. And this is the way I think that we have to think. Yeah, 100%. 100%. Yeah, we can't enter anything with, with, a, with a pessimistic mindset of, you know, it's probably not going to work anyways, because then, you know, we're not going to do anything. So I agree 100%. Um, inshallah, may Allah, you know, grant us an ummah who is strong and capable and willing uh, and able, inshallah. Because a lot of the people, you know, they may watch this up until this point and be like, okay, yeah, you know, may Allah make it easy. And then like, that's it. You can actually aid in the cause of making it easy by sharing this uh, this podcast, this episode, inshallah, sharing posts about it, sharing articles, or just spreading information, like the brother said, host dinners and all that. Um, but subhanAllah, how many people are actually willing to go out of the way and do that? There, oh, there, there, you know what? There might not be a lot, yeah. but you know what? It doesn't have to be a lot. Mm -hmm. But there always, there's always going to be, until Yom Qiyamah, Ta'ifat Mansura, there's going to be uh, 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 that special group, that special uh, uh, group of people. Um, whenever there's a movement, it's always started by a small group. Though That's the small group that gets knocked over the head, kicked down the stairs, punched in the face, but they just keep getting up, spit the blood out, and they just keep on going. And now people stand around and they watch and they'll feel like, mm, well, let me see how far he gets. Then I'll think about whether I want to jump in. But if, if he can hang, then you'll start to see that other brothers and sisters will, you know, rip the kufis off and, you know, pick up a mm. stick. 
so, and I don't want you to, everybody to think that everything is all about sticks and fighting and beating up people. But the reality of the situation is that we have to get tough and we have to define the causes that we support, not necessarily what the powers that be say, okay, you know what, that Palestinian cause, okay, um, yeah, okay, yeah, you guys can support that. Go on and, and do an event. When I was growing up, I was growing up, I wasn't Muslim, you know, I was a, a, I was a, a black and in America. And my mother said to me, white people do not define who our heroes are. And that doesn't take anything away from, from, um, from white people, but she was right. Uh, I mean, who are they to say that Martin Luther King wasn't a hero and it shouldn't be a national holiday because that's what people were saying. Mm -hmm. Who are they to say that Malcolm X um, uh, 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 commemorating um, uh, the work that he did once a year is something that we shouldn't be doing? Who are you to tell us um, who we should be and shouldn't be honoring. If you don't want to honor them, then that's okay. That's up to you. Mm -hmm. But to say that we shouldn't be, then, you know, that, that's just, uh, that, that, that's a no-go zone. I think it's the same thing for us. We've got to define our agenda, what's important to us, and then we have to enforce our agenda. Yeah. Inshallah. Fired, man. How are you feeling so far? Well, first thing that's on my mind is today's the first day of the Hijjah, right? So the, the first 10 days of the last month of the Islamic calendar is here. So this, this is a time when we got to, you know, donate, we got to spread information, we got to do, you know, work on our ibadah, fasting, voluntary, nafal prayers, all that, right? So alhamdulillah, the way everything worked out is the first day is right now, today, we're filming this with you. I'm probably going to edit this video as soon as we're done and put, post it out right now. Usually our episodes are like, we're two months ahead. So if we film with anyone today, it's coming out in September. But <laughs> this, I'm, we're not going to wait. We're going to put this out right now. People need to see. And there's 10 days left. And what you said was profound earlier, brother, that the state of the Ummah is weak because we're not, we're not helping ourselves, right? Allah will never change the condition of a person until we change what's within, them, within ourselves. And what I see today is people are afraid to speak out on stuff. See, we'll post out videos about this, that, and the other, and it'll get views. But we post something like the Uyghur crisis, no one really watches that, right? So it's a sad state of the reality that we're in, but it needs to change. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. You know, um, uh, our brothers and sisters are counting on us, counting mm -hmm. on us to do something. You know, um, I remember when I first came here to Syria and all, mothers were hoping that people would come to help them and, um, from the situation uh, that they were in. Now, at some point, it, it turned into some type of terrorist deal or something like that. But, but once again, that wasn't us who was defining um, the, you know, uh, 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 this crisis by calling the people who came to help as terrorists. Now, do you have people who've done ter uh, a terror ter terrorism? Yeah, absolutely. I, it was ISIS a terrorist group? Absolutely. But somewhere, somehow, it, the whole thing got redefined that foreigners who came to Syria all of a sudden um, became terrorists and need mm. to be on some terrorist list or something like that. Well, how did that happen? I don't know how that happened because in the beginning of the crisis, they were lauded as heroes. But then ISIS started doing their thing and they said, you know what? He's got a beard. He's got a beard, too. Just put them all in the same bin. Makes it easier for us. And that's the reality. But us as Muslims, we cannot allow such black and white uh, um, thinking because we don't benefit from that. It's easy just to sit there and say, you know what? <sighs> so much drama going on out there, man. Just forget it. Who are you to just say, just forget it? Why? Is, is it too complicated? It can't. It's not that complicated. You know, you have to look at what the people are doing and not what they're saying. And that just simplifies everything. But for some people, it may be easier for them just to say, just drop it. Just forget it. Mm. It's 
subhanallah it's just it's a part of our our life nowadays in the west you know this capitalistic consumeristic materialistic secular liberal society is so focused on us that when we when we're faced with the real issue a real crisis it's it's so much easier for us to as you said just say it's complicated and whatever someone else will do with it and go about our own personal business but subhanallah imagine back in the day people like salah din couldn't smile he would not smile until Philistine was freed and that the, the Crusades were, were beaten and overpowered. And the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, like they, like imagine if they were around today. Imagine the Prophet if he was here today. You know something? I, I will tell you, there is no Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa who would be here. He was one of a kind. But I'll tell you something. You've got some people here who do some amazing things amazing things, tireless things. And, um, you know, they're getting up every day early, going to bed late every night. And, you know, and the naysayers, the people that say, oh man, you know, we can't do it. It's too hard, it's too difficult, oh man. You know, that type of thing. Uh, they don't let that sway them. And they just say, look, um, I'm just going to do everything that I can do. And inshallah, then I'm gonna do some more. And if other people just adopt that, um, that uh, attitude, inshallah ta'ala, we're going to be fine because mm. there are people who are doing some serious stuff, man. You see what I'm saying? Serious stuff. I'm talking about serious stuff um, in terms of aid and helping the people, serious stuff on the battlefields. I mean, raining rockets and bombs um, down and around somebody who's trying to protect uh, 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 civilians. It's not fun. It's not fun at all. Um, but they keep coming back. They keep getting up. And those are the examples that we have to look at, that we have to draw um, our strength from. Uh, and, you know, some people, they ask me, they say, all right, Bilal, listen, um, you've been in the siege. You've been shot. You've had a broken uh, a foot from, from being in an explosion. Um, you had a dislocated shoulder because you had got into a like, fist fight with two guys. Uh, th th that were trying to uh, trying to do something that they had no business doing. Um, isn't it time to leave? I mean, for me, I'm like, what are we gonna leave for? We're just warming up. We're just warming mm -hmm. up. SubhanAllah. Um, you mentioned uh, the aid and, and um, you know, the people who, who come and, and you know, put their lives on the line to help. May Allah bless them and you, uh, Allahumma Ameen. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's say, you know, the people who aren't exactly capable or they're not willing to come and aid, is there any charity that would, you know, support those who are supporting Syria or support Syria and the people um, in, in terms of uh, donations? Um, yeah, you've got a lot of different uh, uh, charities out there who are doing some good stuff. I know one of them, I'm not sure if you guys know him, Tokia Sharif, he's got his uh, uh, charity here, um, Live Updates uh, uh, Syria. Uh, maybe your viewers can take a look at that, Live Updates. Uh, from I'm going to put all the, all the links in the description right after, yeah. And if you okay. have anything, just you can just message me on uh, WhatsApp or email. I'll put everything okay. in the description, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Um, and, and, you know, he's here, he's on the ground, he's from, uh, from the UK. Um, uh, he's been here for, for, for some years and, um, yeah, so, so you've got some, some good work that's, that's, that's taking place. Um, I'm a bit hesitant to, to give a roll call for the different, uh, uh charities because then it kind of feels like it's to the exclusion of the others, but th there's a lot of good stuff going on. And if somebody says, Hey, you know what? I want to do something. And they say, okay, look, you got some money and say, yeah, I got some money. So, okay, this charity is doing something that charity is doing something. You can just, you know, buy whatever it is or stipulate what you want it for, whatever. And that's one way you could do it. Somebody could say, you have some money. Somebody else will say, no, you know what? I don't really have anything. So then you can ask the, the, the charity and everything. Say, hey, listen, I can start putting some stuff in some boxes. I can put it in the container and everything. I can donate a couple of hours on a Saturday or Sunday or something. There's something that everybody can do. I can write an article, somebody might say. Somebody else might say, I can host an event at a, at a, at a, at a, at a, at a masjid. You know, one of those bring your own bag deals or something. And then people can just come together 
and discuss uh, uh, the situation. You can um, even have a speaker from here to actually speak to the people and, and all. There are several different Westerners uh, who are here, um, even one good Sheikha. Uh, she can uh, talk to the people. So there's a lot of stuff um, th that can be, gone, it can be done. But there's one thing that I really want to instill in the people, and that's this, be hungry. Because Allah is promising too much to be lax, lackadaisical. Allah is promising, I mean, things that no eye has ever seen, no ear has ever heard. We got to get hungry about that. We got to be excited that Allah gave us a situation where we could do something, even if it's something small. We got to be excited to get up and to say, hey, I'm, I'm putting in my bid for the day to, uh, 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 to, to get to Jannah. You know, um, and we've got to we've got to go through this thing. There's a thing called loving the process. Now, we're right here today, where we want to be is over here, but we're not there yet. We've got to ask Allah to allow us to love the process. That means that we're gonna love getting up every day. We're gonna love when I get punched in the face and everything. I spit that blood out and I come back with a smile because I know I'm in the fight. And, the, and Allah is going to reward me for it. I know that when I put some money on the table to buy some food or some clothing or to, or to provide shelter for some Muslim that is less fortunate and, and, and all, and that set me back. It set me back. But I love the process. Why? Because I asked Allah. I'm not after just the end result. I'm after the process. I'm every day. I'm in the middle of it. And, and, and I ask Allah to keep me in it and keep me hungry. I mean, that's what I think that the people would really, really benefit from. Look, if you don't love the process, just raise your hands and ask Allah, help me to love to serve your religion. Help me to love the process in going forward. And inshallah, Allah huwa ladhi yujiba da'wat. He's the one that uh, answers the, da uh, the dua of the supplicant. Inshallah, inshallah, I mean. Beautifully said, mashallah. Subhanallah. Fa, do you have any questions before I ask my uh, my relatively big one? Mm -hmm. uh, I'll say go for it, bro. All right. What's up, brother? Do you have something to add? Yeah. No, no. He said relatively big one. I'm like, uh oh, oh. I'm like, this, man. I was like that when I got there, right? Okay. I didn't do that. <laughs> All right. Bismillah. So what would you say is the, the goal for Syria? The, if you could summarize it, the clear-cut goal, what do we want to do for Syria? And what, at what state do we want Syria to be in? Do we want to remove the leader and replace it with someone better? Or is there an ultimate goal that we're trying to achieve? And before you begin, if, if you want to continue, by all means, if you want to change the light, go for it. Um, yeah, let, let me do that because I don't know why the light went off. It doesn't mm. usually do that. Uh, hold on one second. No worries, no worries. Take your time, brother. Is there a clear goal for Syria? At what state do we want Syria to end in? Do we want to remove the leaders now and replace it with someone better? Do we want a type of democracy? Do you want Sharia? What would you say is the ultimate goal for Syria? Well, the ultimate goal for Syria. Okay, let me ask you guys a question first. Um, the majority of the people here in Syria are what? Muslims, right? Yeah. Everybody knows that. Um, and therefore, if the majority of the people here are Muslim, that would mean that they would like to have Islam to be the governing force in their lives. Mm. That's just basic human nature. You wouldn't be Muslim if you didn't think Islam was a good idea. Yeah. But somehow different agendas, people get the idea that, well, um, if you want Sharia, then that means that there's some terrorism involved. But no, I have a Muslim friend. He's over here. He's got he's a Muslim friend. And, and but I, I don't understand what, what, you know, the people here are Muslims. They want to have Islam. And that's the end goal. Now, as long as we reach that goal, we need to not be a people of revenge. For example, if people who are doing things today that they shouldn't be doing were to repent tomorrow and start doing the things that they're supposed to be doing, then we're fine with that. It doesn't matter 
Um, mm. You know, who is, 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 what's his name is Muhammad or Ahmed or Mustafa, who's, who, who is the leader? That's not what we're after. We're after the leader who will implement the things that the people want, which is Islam. Now, as long as that is, is, is on the table, as long as they're willing to do that, then we're willing to, uh, you know, we're willing to bend over backwards for that. And that's what the goal is because the people here are Muslim. Now, um, uh, it, does that entail regime change? Well, it's looking like it's going to uh, uh, entail regime change, but as long as that door for Tawbah is open and it is, um, uh, uh, you know, then people have an opportunity to change the course that they're in. We hope that they change that course, but you know, I mean, even Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Musa alayhi salam to, 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 to speak a word to Fir'aun. Mm. So if, if, if that was the case for Musa alayhi salam, how can we write off anybody? We're not going to write off anybody. But if the people are, going, uh, are not going to do the things that Islam are requiring for them to do, then we will have to ask them to please step aside. And if they're unwilling to step aside, then we just give them a gentle nudge to step aside. And if they are unwilling to do that and everything, then we have to encourage them to move out of the way. Because this whole time, um, I imagine a lot of the viewers, because this is something that I was you know, uh, going through, through uh, this discussion, was this thought of, okay, so what's the goal? What are we working towards? You know, we're donating, inshallah, we're striving, we're working, we're sharing, we're in, informing people. What's the actual goal? So to have this set goal, I think, alhamdulillah, will help a lot of people feel motivated. Because along with this feeling of, you know, someone else will do it or it's complicated, um, there's this backing of, I don't even know what I'm working towards. So as long as people know the goal, inshallah, the steps towards that goal become a little smoother and a little easier. So, Jazakallah khair, Habib. May Allah bless you and reward you. Well, Jazakum. Habib. Fire, man. <laughs> I mean, guys, make some dua for our brother Bilal to just stay steadfast in his mission, to just do everything he's been doing times like a million. And may Allah reward him immensely for that. Yeah. May Allah liberate more individuals like Bilal to continue to strive to liberate the Ummah. I mean, and just pray for the actual people themselves that need liberation. I mean, I mean, I mean, so. Brother Habibi, um, uh, brother uh, Bilal, where could the viewers find you if they want to get in contact, if they want to learn more, if they want to hear more, if they want to be a part of you know this beautiful cause? Where could they reach you? Um, uh, you uh, I can be reached uh, first to myself, Bilal Abdul Kareem. I'm on Facebook, Bilal Abdul Kareem, uh, uh, Bilal uh, Kareem on Twitter. You can. Um, I'm also there. Um, uh, so that's Twitter, Facebook. You've got OGN uh, TV, or you know you can find that on YouTube as well. So yeah, we're out there, man. And you can send me a direct message. Um, I, I do answer um, my messages. Um, that is when I can get a chance to read them. But I do read them. So it's never really a couple of days that go by before I, I don't get back to people. So yeah, mm. I'd, I'd be happy to hear from the people um, and all. And yeah, it, it'd be great to hear from you. Great to hear from everybody. Inshallah, inshallah. Send them a DM if you guys want to go uh, with a further step, how you can help. If you have any more questions, you can re reach out to brother Bilal Abdullah Kareem. And with that being said, I think I don't want a sliver of uh, people seeing like a two hour duration and not clicking. So I think if it's short and sweet, we already got the message across. I say, if there's not much to say, we can wrap it up. Yeah. Do you have what anything, you any final words, um, Brother Bilal? Yeah. Anything at all. Just, just some closing, closing yeah. words for any of the viewers. I, I've got a last a ditch thing that I would like to say. Inshallah, it, it, it won't be long. Um, Surah to Maryam. Surah to Maryam, everybody knows Surah to Maryam. Zachariah, alayhi uh, salam, in the beginning of the surah, he's making dua to Allah in a low voice. He doesn't have to get up and scream and shout. He's making dua to Allah in a low voice. And he's asking Allah for what? Uh, to grant him an heir who can 
uh, inherit from him, not inherit money, but to inherit profithood. Now, everybody sits there and they say, hey, man, we know this story. I said, okay, but I want you to understand the nuance of the story. His wife, or I should say, uh, he himself was old. He was an old man. His wife was barren. Now, most people would sit there and say, um, hey, uh, Zachariah, what's that dua that you're making over there? You're asking for money? You, 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 know, you want to help the orphans or something? Zachariah knows that Allah can do anything and everything. And so he went straight for the gusto. He asked Allah, in spite of the fact that his wife is barren, in spite of the fact that he's an old man, he asked Allah to give him an heir to, accept, to uh, 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 I'm sorry, I forget my English here, uh, to um, bring uh, or, or to inherit the prophethood mm -hmm. uh, from him so that it would continue. Now, people would look at him and, and say, come on, man. Look, why don't you just take care of some orphans, pat some kids on the head. You and your wife, y'all be y'all too old for all this. Now, do some, make a dua that's realistic. Mm. See, uh, Zachariah, alayhi salam, he knew what was realistic because he knew Allah as a prophet. He knew Allah better than everybody else. So I would say to everybody, the power of dua, you want to see the, the, the ship in Syria be righted with righteous people at the helm of it, raise your hands and make dua. If you want to see the Uyghur situation get better, raise your hands and make dua. It's all possible. There's nothing impossible. There's nothing out there that's beyond the capability of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you want to work for the sake of Allah and you want that to be your gig, ask Allah for it. And it's all there for Allah to give to you. So that's what I wanted to the people. Don't want anybody out there to say, oh, I'm down. No, oh, things are not going the way I wanted them to go. And all, hey, listen, got to understand something. This conflict here in Syria doesn't need Bilal. Bilal needs the conflict to get closer to Allah. So likewise, um, if you see a conflict mm. or Muslims that are in difficult circumstances or situation, understand you need to participate in that uh, towards a solution more than that uh, situation needs you. So that's what I wanted to say, man. Sorry, I, I took too long. No, 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 brother. My, my mind is blown, brother Bilal. Like, I, I have a complete paradigm shift of looking at it now. It used to always be the prerogative that <clears throat> they need your help or we need your help. Syria needs your help. But it's like, no, we need to help Syria. We need to help these organizations. We need to help these causes. Because if we don't, who will? And we need to because if I wake up any day and I have two choices, one to get closer to Allah and farther from Allah, what is it doing if I just keep scrolling and I don't decide to take action? Yeah, yeah. SubhanAllah. SubhanAllah. Very true. And That's just right. to, to those two beautiful That's messages. Right. Ask Allah to help you to love the process. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean. may Allah use us and not replace us. I mean, and just, just I mean. to add to that beautiful story I mean. of Zakriyar alayhi uh, salam, he actually, he adds at the end of the dua, وَلَمْ أَكُنْ بِدُعَائِكَ رَبِّي شَقِيَةً I have not, I've never been displeased in my dua to you, right? SubhanAllah. So on top of making dua, make dua, knowing that Allah is listening and Allah will respond to it. Allah will respond to it. Yeah, that's the kind of hope and the, uh, the trust that we should have in, in our protector, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amen. That's right. Yeah. May Allah bless you brothers for having me on Ameen, ya Rabbi. Ameen. And you as well for everything All the work you do having me. Allah accept mm -hmm. you and bless you and increase you And bring more about like you Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen Ameen, Ameen, Ameen Jazakum Allah khair Wa ayyakum habibi Until next time if there's anything else In the meantime you know where to find us Thank you so much for your time May Allah bless you immensely Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen Ameen, wa ayyakum Thanks again for having me And salam to all the brothers and sisters Habibi Right, with that being said, Allahumma atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina adab in nar. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. First and foremost, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said that basically when a, a group of companions came to him and asked, you know, we're dealing with these horrible doubts, you know, these doubts that if we believe them, they would lead to kufr, horrible doubts. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he looked at him, he said that this is good news. This is good news. 
And obviously it's very, it sounds oxymoronic. How is, you know, big doubts in faith, good news. In the Prophet ﷺ, he said it's a sign of high iman. And think about it. If you have catastrophic, life-changing doubts about your religion, it can't be anything other than a sign that you have high faith. Because you don't wake up in the morning and become worried that unicorns don't exist. Because you never believed in unicorns in the first place. So the fact that these doubts are worrying you is a sign that you have high iman. That you actually believe in Islam. 